I, I think a, a mistake that a lot of people make is to assume that disordered eating is not as serious as an eating disorder, but, but that's certainly not the case. Uh, um, disordered eating can affect um, uh, most major organ systems just like a, a, an eating disorder can. So it's just a matter of whether it's in the DSM? Is that it? Uh, uh, well, in, in, in many ways. Uh, uh, disordered eating, uh, we don't have diagnostic criteria for disordered eating. Um, many, many, many years ago, uh, the American College of Sports Medicine, and I think it was 1992, uh, uh, tried to, to get ahead of, the, of this a little bit and, and to help athletes. And, and they were looking to, to try to discover disordered eating before it got, got to the point that, that we would diagnose it as a clinical eating disorder. Uh, again, in an effort to get there early uh, and, and intervene. Um, and, and that's where the term uh, disordered eating actually comes from, the ACSM. Uh, and then in uh, 1997, uh, they put out a formal statement regarding what they call the, the female athlete triad. Mm -hmm. And then another one in uh, 2007. Um, but, but again, for me, and I always take a practical approach to this, uh, and, and people say, well, how, how do you know when you should go to treatment? Because for me, that's, that's the real issue. Mm -hmm. and, and, and here's what I say. I take a very practical approach. If it interferes with your physical medical health, it's a problem that needs treatment. If it interferes with your mental health, it's a problem that needs treatment. If it interferes with uh, important aspects of life such as sport or school or work or relationships, it could benefit from treatment. So, so to me, it's not so much what we call it, uh, it, it it's what we decide to do about it. And, and again, uh, whether it's a, a, a diagnosable eating disorder or uh, disordered eating, um, I always recommend treatment and uh, the sooner the better. So uh, that would put about 90% of Americans, I think, needing to have some kind of help. Help, um, because well, there, I, I, I think disordered eating is, is very common. Mm -hmm. And I think, uh, unfortunately, uh, it, it's so common that it, it may be hard for people to recognize that they're doing something that's unusual. Uh, it, it's like with exercise. Uh, I, I think there are a lot of people who believe that uh, the more exercise, the better. Uh, that you can't get too much of this good thing that we call exercise. You certainly can, uh, but, but in our society, uh, and, and I, I hear people all the time say, oh, my gosh, you're exercising every day, two or three hours a day. I wish I could do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, no, it, it, it really sort of depends on, on uh, the motivation for doing it. Uh, it depends on, on the body's readiness and, and uh, willingness to do it. Um, but um, uh, I, I, I think it is harder and harder to find what I call normal eating. Uh, it gets harder and harder to find what I call normal exercise. Uh, I, I can remember when, when uh, Pauline Powers and I wrote the exercise balance. And we were talking, and uh, Pauline's a psychiatrist uh, uh, of considerable note, and uh, uh, she, said, she said, Ron, do you know anybody uh, that you would consider to be a normal exerciser. And I thought about that. And I, most of the people that, that I thought of uh, were not what I would call normal. Now, again, what does normal mean? Um, I, I, I think uh, with, with the advent of, of dieting uh, and, and restrictive eating and, and different kinds of diets, and I, I think it's very hard for people to know what's normal. And um, uh, I, I, I think the term now is probably a better term. It's intuitive eating. Mm -hmm. And basically, uh, a lot of the dietitians are, are proposing this. And, and, I, and I guess it's, it's probably what I recommend as well, that you eat what you want when you want. Uh, you don't overeat. You eat until you're full and you stop. And, and all of that sounds wonderful. Uh, but um, I really question how many people actually eat that way. And maybe how many people can actually eat that way? Uh, I, I, I have a feeling that, that the number's not very high. Well, not with the kind of food that is in our society, which is highly processed with uh, addictive substances like cheese, sugar, fat, umami flavor, salt. It's, yep. it's really drugs. Mm -hmm. And so I like your definition of um, healthy eating, I'd like to say, because I don't think it's yeah. normal at all, which is eating till you're 
comfortably satisfied yes. and stopping and not thinking much about food in between until you're hungry right. again and yeah. not yeah um, eat, eat when you're hungry and, and, and again most of the people that i work with or have worked with in the past uh and when i talk with them about and 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 the thing that uh, that i want to stress about about eating disorders and, and disordered eating is that when when we do intuitive eating or normal eating uh, we just eat and then we go about our business but but most of the people that i have treated uh will spend uh much of their day thinking about eating mm -hmm. before they eat they'll think about what they're going to eat uh, after they eat, they'll think about, oh, maybe I shouldn't have eaten that or I ate too much. Mm -hmm. and, and so it's not just eating. And, and when we think about treatment for disordered eating or eating disorders, uh, to me, uh, more important than the actual behavior of eating is the emotions associated with eating or not eating. Uh, but, but maybe uh, even and, more importantly, the there are a lot of psychological with issues that um, affect uh, one's eating. Uh, how we think about it, how we feel about it, um, our, our uh, weight history, our, our life history. Um, and, and I I think a lot of people want to believe that, that it's a very s simple com uh, construct. But eating, to me, is very complex. Exercise is very complex. Mm -hmm. um, I, uh, and and the, the interesting thing for me that is those two seem, seem to go together. Uh, I, I, I have people who find it difficult to find a balance. Uh, they either want to eat too much or they want to eat too little. And then when we look at exercise, it's the same thing. But, but the thing that's really interesting about this is from most of my eating disorder patients, what I found is that the people who want to exercise the most typically want to exercise or want to eat the least, uh, which, which doesn't balance very well. Mm -hmm. uh, and very often, people on the other end of the spectrum, and, and when, when Pauline and I wrote The Exercise Balance, we were looking at, at, at both uh, sort of those who exercise too much and those who don't exercise enough. Uh, a lot of times, the people who are eating too much are certainly not exercising enough. And it may be that as their weight increases, it makes exercise even more difficult and more unpleasant. Uh, but, but that uh, balance or, or lack thereof uh, has always been very interesting to me. Uh, my sense is that we have to find a balance with our eating. We have to find a balance with our exercise. Then we have to find a balance between our eating and our exercise. Hey folks, okay. Back by very popular demand is our plant-powered plate fridge magnet, which you are going to receive for free if you leave us a rating and a review on whatever platform you're listening to this podcast on. So here are the details. Just write your quick review. Does not need to be long. Does not need to be a whole story. Just be honest and speak from the heart. Then take a quick screenshot of the review you wrote and email it to us at podcast at switchforgood.org. That's podcast at switchforgood.org. And include your mailing address so we can send you a power plate. We are doing this because the more reviews we garner, the higher we go in search results, which means more folks will learn about our podcast. So the power is in your hands. Leave us a review and zoom, zoom, your power plate arrives at your doorstep. So thank you so much for tuning in today. If we helped you in any way, then click the subscribe button and let's keep hanging out together. We have so much more to share with you. And if you need more information on actually making the switch for good, please visit us at switchforgood.org for loads of info. And you can subscribe to our mailing list where you will receive all sorts of super cool gifts, discount codes to our very fave dairy-free products, and a lifetime of powerful health tips. So join us on the journey to switch for good. This is the future.